If you want something in your life, it's going to be up to you to get it. And how you get that thing first comes by you having that relationship with yourself. So the other day I had an epiphany and the epiphany was I am lazy. My friend, I made a TikTok about this and it literally, it got a lot of views because people be resonating with this. She has a great body. Listen, I have a great body, but like she's got a nice booty, okay? Really, really nice. And I was thinking about her and I'm like, you know what? She has such good results at the gym. She's been lifting since she was like 16 years old and she's just always been a girl who goes to the gym. And obviously it makes sense. Her butt is very nice. And I used to be a personal trainer. Like I, I understand that the reason why she has the butt that she has, the nice body that she has is cause she goes to the gym and she's very consistent. And it's just funny to me because obviously I know this, I know what you need to do to go to the gym and get whatever type of results that you're wanting. Honestly, with anything in your life, you have to be consistent with everything. I am somebody who's very consistent with other things in my life as well. But like when I see her and I'm like, damn, I need to be working on my booty. I'm like trying to find a way in which I can have the body that I want without being consistent at the gym. And I'm like, the other day it just hit me. I was like, girl, there's literally no other way that you're going to get X, Y, and Z unless you are being consistent. So I started analyzing her behavior, especially when it comes to the gym specifically. And I realized that she is not tied to any sort of outcome. When I talk to her about, you know, what does she do, do at the gym, whatever, she literally just goes to the gym as a part of her identity. She doesn't look at herself like, every day I need to go to the gym and like build my booty or like build X, Y, and Z. She just goes. Obviously she had a, a goal of going to the gym and then looking great, but her going consistently and just making the gym a part of her identity allowed her to have a great body, allowed her to have results, allowed her to have whatever, just the way anyone else would when you are consistent. But what really stuck with me was she really is detached from that result. Like, you know when we all wanna to go to the gym, we want a nice body or we want something, you know, we want more money, we want something. We obsess over the outcome, we obsess over the thing, we wanna get it, we wanna know when, and all of that. She, her focus is not on that. Her focus is not on a big booty. Her focus is not on X, Y, and Z about her body. When I came to this epiphany, I realized that is the energy that I need to have with going to the gym. Now, I wanna disclaim a few things here because on my channel, I'm all about like embracing yourself, accepting yourself, loving yourself. I have struggled with a very unhealthy relationship with food in the past. I used to be a fitness girly. I was obsessed with the gym. I know the ins and outs of how to eat, what to eat, when to eat it workouts, everything. I've been through it all, huge phases of my life, but it was always definitely not the healthiest routines because of the place in which I was trying to change from, which was a place of self-hate. I had to heal my relationship with food. I have a video on that. If you wanna watch that, it's taken me many years to kind of come to balance. I eat very healthy, I move my body, I'm in a very healthy mental state of my life. And so I wanna disclaim that because when I said I realized I was lazy, I'm only allowing myself to even say that to myself because I know that I've done all of the healing work and all of the work first because you don't ever wanna tell yourself you're lazy, you're bad, you're fat, you're ugly, you're anything, any of that ever, but especially when you are struggling with an unhealthy relationship with food, unhealthy body image, all of those things. But you know, there's going to be a time in your life where you're still gonna to want to have the desire to do better and be better. We are human beings. We always wanna to strive to be better. And that's where I'm at in my life. And it's like, okay, how do I find that balance of accepting myself and letting myself rest and healing, which I've been doing, and actually challenging myself? And I'm at the point in my life where it's time to challenge myself. And so that's why I was so intrigued by my friend and her results and everything. And it just made me realize I need to start identifying as somebody who goes to the gym, somebody who does X, Y, and Z. I identify as a YouTuber, I identify as somebody who makes money, I identify as someone who is healed. Let's identify as somebody who is very fit. Now listen, I am fit. I have a, I have a really nice body. Again, it, it honestly is a reflection of me healing my mental health issues that I've had in the past, my relationship with food, all that kind of stuff. And I eat very balanced, I eat very healthy, but again, I still have the desire to build muscle, to make sure that I'm strong, to make sure that I look good. Yes, of course, 
everyone wants to have a nice butt. Everyone wants to look amazing. But I, my focus is honestly less on that because I've healed that relationship with myself anyways. But still, I have the desire. And also, I know how important it is for us women to have muscle on our bodies, to move our bodies, to be strong, to be healthy. And, you know, I'm 27 years old. I want to make sure that I'm really taking care of myself and that is going to require a challenge. That is going to require me getting up and going to the gym and moving my body and not slacking and you know, not, oh, I'll do it tomorrow and you know, it's fine, I don't need to do that. So anyways, I am in my fitness girl era, which I've been in since like December, but I'm really into it now. And in this video, I want to talk about some of the things that I have been picking up, some of the things that I've been doing as I can even continue to move into this era to help me not be lazy and complacent, okay? Because, come on, it's spring, moving into summer, we're done being complacent, we're done being lazy. So, I am in my workout outfit, I'm eating a banana because I did wake up a little bit late, and I'm gonna go to the gym, it's a leg day, which I'm so excited. Also, I have a lot of playlists, Spotify playlists, if you want, I'll have it linked in the description if you want a music playlist, and I'm gonna go to the gym, do some legs and then I'm gonna come back, make some food, I'll show you what I'm making, but I also wanna give you guys some more tips to help you stop being lazy and complacent. So when I go to the gym, I'm going to my condo gym, but I always bring on leg day this little hip thruster uh, pad because my hips literally hate the bars so much. And I also have a bunch of bands in here as well. And then I'll put my AirPods and water in it. And we are good to go. I'm back from the gym. I tried to film and then my iPhone said that it was out of storage. And honestly, I realized I should have just brought my camera just to get a few clips. But if you guys want me to put in the clips, let me know for next time if I make a video like this. But just got out of the shower. I am literally starving. So recently at the gym, I have been working on my strength, building muscle. It is so important to build muscle girlies, okay? We love the hot girl walks, we love the Pilates, we love the yoga, it's great. It's very helpful to heal your nervous system as well if you are somebody who deals with adrenal fatigue, hormonal issues, whatever. But don't be afraid to lift weights because it's really not lifting weights and going into the gym that is going to stress you out and be too much. It's just how frequent you go, how hard you're going at the gym. You know, those hit workouts, those crazy workouts. It doesn't need to be that intense, but that is definitely probably maybe a podcast episode for another day. Before I went to the gym, I actually had a banana. Sometimes I'm not hungry, sometimes I am, so I'll just eat. I don't put rules on things. But because I'm really focusing on building my muscle, I need to eat more food and I don't count calories. I do pre-plan some of my meals, but they're very like they're very loose. If I'm not feeling like eating that day, like I won't eat a lot of food, or if I wanna go out with my friends, I will. Absolutely no type of rules when it comes to that. It doesn't need to be like that anyways. I have gone through so much of restricting and dieting and all this stuff, like I said, and it's just not needed. So anyways, I have a very healthy relationship with food and I like to eat. And I'm going to make sure that the food that I'm eating is very nurturing for the body, especially when it comes to building muscles. By the way, if it sounds like it's echoing, it's because it is. Some of you guys have commented and they're like, girl, like, can you get a mic? Babe, I don't have a couch. I don't have anything in this living room. So it's just gonna sound like that for a while. I'm very sorry. I do have a great camera, but I just, I don't have furniture. I just moved into this place. So anyways, let's make the Greek wrap. So what I do, is I have a tortilla, a whole wheat tortilla. And this is, guys, this is literally a life hack, okay? I have plain Greek yogurt. This is lactose free. Um, but this is good if you like sour cream or any sort of like sauce on your wrap. It's so good, just use freaking Greek yogurt and it'll be fine. And also, Greek yogurt is really high in protein. Now, how much I'm putting on this is like not gonna be a lot, like I don't, you know, I wouldn't look at this and be like, this is where my protein is coming from. But I mean, anything helps, especially when you are trying, when you have goals and you're trying to gain um, muscle. I just took everything out because my freaking fridge is going to start beeping. All right, so I like to pre-cook, obviously this is pre-cooked, um, some of my protein for the week, just so that I can have, so I can add it into a wrap, I can add it into a bowl, whatever, I'm not, very strict, but I have some grass-fed ground beef, so I'm going to warm it up and put it in the wrap. Another thing I like to do is put hummus. This is 
za'atar hummus. I don't know. It just has seasoning in it, I guess. And I just like to put a little bit on this. This would also be so good um, if you had just like a salad bowl. You put a little bit of Greek yogurt on field greens with some hummus. Um, it would just taste so good. So anyways, that's that. And then this is, this is the start of the show, okay? I make this all the time. I cut up cucumber and grape tomatoes. This time I have like different colored uh, cherry tomatoes, or I call them grape tomatoes, but like they're the same thing. I add feta in it, and then I add some balsamic vinaigrette and uh, olive oil, and I use that just as the dressing. And I'll, again, I'll eat this with salmon, I'll have this on the side with whatever protein, or I'll add it in the wrap, which I've been doing, and it tastes so freaking good with the Greek yogurt. And like this just satisfies the part of me that really does love to eat healthy as well. Okay, I moved the angle so you could see it a little bit better. I also bought this uh, red beet and cabbage organic kraut. I had this on a bowl at Impact Kitchen a while ago, and I was like, I need to get this and just add it. Again, it's just like adding it into the wrap or adding it into a bowl. I love try and put as much vegetables and like, this is really a prebiotic, honestly, but anything in my food. So I think that like when you're making a wrap, like don't be afraid, honey. Do not be afraid to add some of this into the wrap. Although this is obviously going to be a little messy, but I don't care because I'm getting everything I need in it. This week I bought spinach. Usually I just buy field greens because I don't love to eat spinach as like a salad bowl. Like I like different types of lettuce, but whatever. I wasn't really thinking of having a salad bowl, so it makes sense to have the spinach. Also, I love to have spinach as well because you can literally add it into any of your smoothie bowls, really. Look how freaking beautiful that is. Hopefully it's picking up. So great. This is like, it's fine, it's fine. And then I just take out my ground beef and I put it on the wrap as well. I'm making it really pretty right now because I'm gonna take an Instagram photo. <laughs> but I mean, obviously you can just like put it however you want and then I will wrap it up. Hello, it has been like an hour or so since I've had my wrap and I am so freaking tired today. I know why I'm tired though. It's because I didn't really sleep at the proper time last night because I went out with my friend and was up on FaceTiming and you know, it is what it is. I'm out here living. But also the fact that I did such a, not a hard strenuous workout, but I lifted heavy today and it was leg day. I can definitely feel it. So it took me a second to get back up, have my coffee so that we can finish off the video. So let's bring it back to what I was talking about before. When it comes to getting something in your life, whether that be results at the gym, better health status, more money, the career that you want, whatever, what does that require? That requires you to take certain actions. We struggle with identifying as that person and a lot of it has to do with our beliefs. It has to do with what we believe about the thing that we are trying to accomplish. A lot of the times we get in our own ways. Sometimes we focus so much on the outcome that the process feels so strenuous and it's so uncomfortable that we can't handle it. Sometimes when we, especially when it comes to health and fitness journey, when we are trying to stop bad habits and go to healthier ones, there is always a reason why you were doing the bad habit in the first place, why you were slacking on your goals, why you were eating all the processed foods, why you were constantly going to food when you're emotional. And it's so important that if you struggle with being able to identify as somebody who goes to the gym or just gets up, if you really keep going into these cycles, you need to look deeper into what emotions is the bad habit actually suppressing for me. Because the thing is, when you do any sort of bad habit, we look at it as self-sabotage and it's so bad and I'm so wrong for doing it and it's so dumb and it logically doesn't make sense. I know what's good for me, but I keep doing it. You keep doing it because you have a part of you that resides within your subconscious mind that for some reason believes doing this behavior, the one that you've learned over and over again in your whole life, that is keeping you safe. So let's give an example of eating bad food. Logically, we know eating bad food is not good for us. Why do we do it? There's many reasons. A lot of the times we emotionally eat when something is stressful in our lives, or you know, we, we feel really low about ourselves and we're, we're not taking care of ourselves, so we just also eat really poorly. And the foods that we are eating actually are making us feel very comfortable in the moment. And if you were to take away that food, what would be underneath the feeling of 
being comfortable would be uncomfortable. You would be uncomfortable with feeling alone. You would have to actually deal with some of your emotions that maybe you don't know how to deal with. And the way that you deal with handling your emotions is eating food. There's a lot of things that are residing underneath a certain behavior that you are doing. So it's so important to look at your life when you are trying logically, cause you know it's good for you to get up and go to work and figure out your career path and make more money, but you're not able to do it. There are parts of you that are operating that are needing you to look deeper. What does those parts of you really need in order for you guys to integrate, let's say, and go in the path of identifying as a person who gets up and goes and eats healthy and does all these things. For me, I had to heal my relationship with food before I was able to just identify as somebody who eats healthy and identify as somebody who is worthy of eating healthy food and not feeling like I needed to have the food in order to suppress emotions because when my emotions did come up, when life does happen, I had the tools and I was healthy enough to be able to work through my mental health issues instead of going to food. But I was only able to do that by addressing what the hell was going on every single time I would go binge eat, every single time that I would feel stressed and I would go to food. I realized that my environment around me were not safe. I was very, very stressed out. I was burnt out. I was putting too much on my plate. I was restricting myself too much. I was trying to do all of the things all at once and it became too much for my nervous system. I became way too stress and then of course I'm going to fall back into eating unhealthy food because in the moment unhealthy food makes you feel good. Ice cream, candy, all of these things comfort you in times of stress. And the more that you're able to recognize what specific emotions, when am I trying to run away from these emotions? Like, is it when I'm not talking to someone and I don't know what to do with myself? Or maybe when I'm feeling very low about my self-worth and I see everyone else and they look so beautiful or I'm scrolling on social media and everyone looks so amazing and I look at myself and I am nowhere near how they look. So I just feel like it's too big, it's too much, I'm never gonna get there. And then so you fall back into your old ways. Like, these are things you need to recognize within yourself and how you think because you're, you need to rewire these stories. You need to rewire your brain in order for you to be able to take care of yourself like if you scroll on social media and you see all of these people and they're so healthy and they're so amazing and you're telling yourself stories like it's never gonna be me it's gonna take too long like of course you are not going to get up and identify as somebody who takes care of themselves and goes to the gym if you believe you can't get that thing like when it comes to having something that you really want in your life, you need to believe that you can get it eventually. And that is really what is going to help you stay consistent. I've said this a million times on my YouTube channel. This is what has gotten me to, I'm almost at 200,000 subscribers. I, when I started in, on YouTube, I backed what I was talking about. I knew what I was giving out to the world was valuable. People needed to hear it. I also knew that if I was consistent, eventually, I was going to have a YouTube channel the way that I wanted to. I didn't need to worry about when, I didn't need to worry about how, I didn't need to know when I was gonna make money, I didn't need to know when I was going to get my plaque, I didn't need to know any of that. I just knew if I was consistent, I was gonna get these results and I continued. I made sure that I posted one video a week. I identified as a person who was a YouTuber. I took everything so seriously, even when I wasn't making money until it happened, inevitably happened. I detached from the outcome. It is so important when you are trying to work towards something very specific in your life that you detach from the outcome. Listen, you're not going to fully detach because obviously you're going to think about the goal and like how great it would be and like what my life would look like or you know how great I would look if I actually did go to the gym. That's great. You can keep that kind of in the, on the back burner in your head. But what we usually do when we want to go to the gym or we want to become a YouTuber, we want to make more money, we hyper obsess about the when and the how and can I do it? I don't know if I can do it. And those are the thoughts and the stories that actually prevent us from getting out of our bed and getting up and just going to do the thing. And let's bring it back to health and fitness. One of the things that really changed the game for me so that I could get up and identify and go to the gym and not self-sabotage and not uh, do too much and push myself too far is changing out of a place of self-love. The thing with fitness and health, majority of us, why do we wanna go on this health and fitness journey? Because we don't like what we see in the mirror. 
And you know what? That's okay that you don't love everything about you, okay? Again, we're humans. We always want to change and evolve. But if you are strictly changing out of a place of self-hate, it is going to be very hard for you to be sustainable and get up out of your bed and identify as somebody who goes to the gym. Because you're not really identifying as somebody who goes to the gym. You are looking at yourself like you need to be somebody that needs to go to the gym because you are bad, you are ugly, you are wrong, you are fat, you are everything. And you are not worthy in this moment. If you look at yourself like that, it's going to, you're gonna go back. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna go back. And you're gonna go back for multiple reasons. One, because if you try and change out of a place of manipulation and force, it never works. With people and with yourself, it never works. You probably also have a lot of habits that, like I said, are helping you suppress certain emotions or cope in ways in your life that you've never learned how to deal with in a very healthy way. And again, you are so obsessed with the outcome because you're telling yourself until i look like the girls on instagram i'm not gonna live my life i'm not gonna look at myself like i'm worthy of love like i'm worthy of living my life and i always think about this idea of can you love yourself and accept yourself but still wanting to change and i think that there's a very unique balance that you need to ebb and flow through and what is going to help you do that is detaching from that outcome and not letting your whole livelihood ride on the fact that you need to have the YouTube channel, the, the fit body, the, the relationship, whatever. Making sure that you're also checking in with yourself and learning how to cope in healthy ways if you're doing unhealthy behaviors, but also the stories that you're telling yourself about getting this thing in the first place. Bringing it back to laying in your bed and waking up and deciding that you are just somebody who goes to the gym. We tell ourselves so many goddamn stories. We tell ourselves it's gonna be so hard and I don't know when I'm gonna get the results or you know, I feel like I'm losing my freedom because now I gotta go to the gym or I have to work on something. Like you need to reframe things for yourself. If you say that you want a nice body, you want money, you want a dream life, whatever, you really need to tell yourself a better story, okay? The gym doesn't need to be that hard. It doesn't need to be a big thing. And quite frankly, it's not scary. And the reason why I say it's not scary and why you should be telling yourself this when it comes to starting anything new is, again, we have a part of us, a protector part, that wants to keep us safe. So if that protector part perceives that you know, you're trying to do something healthy for yourself, like eating healthy food or going to the gym or you know, um, getting up and not being lazy anymore, that part of you is going to wonder, okay, I don't know if this is safe. And uh, you know, like all of the emotions that might come up because I'm not suppressing with food, I don't know if I can trust that. Like, I don't, I don't think that we can handle these things. And you need to be that adult self and tell yourself, going to the gym, doing something for the first time, doing all these things, it is safe. We can do this. It doesn't need to be a big thing. It doesn't need to be a big change. And on top of that, you're gonna have to pick up new coping skills for that part of you that really wants to suppress, that really wants to lay down and just escape from the world and not do anything and wants to be lazy and wants to do all these things. You have to really have this internal dialogue and you have to look at yourself like you have uh, conflicting parts within you. But what we do is we realize we have a protector part, we have the part of us that wants to be lazy and wants to eat and wants to whatever, and we just look at it like it's bad. You're stupid, you're wrong, you're a failure, you're X, Y, and Z. But the truth is, this part of you, most likely very young, learned how to cope, wants to keep you safe. And if you actually look at that part of you with, with a, a curious mind, a curious heart, a loving open heart, you will start to see what this part of you is actually trying to protect you from. And on top of that, you're gonna be able to aid it in a new way. Let me give you a quick example. When I was younger, I used to eat candy all the time. I was like addicted to candy. And I just like always knew that about myself when I grew up. Like I just always was obsessed with candy, but like to an ex a crazy extent, like it wasn't just like a kid who loves candy. It was like, I would constantly be thinking about it all the time. And I wasn't an overweight kid. I didn't eat a lot of food, but it was just the candy. What I realized over the years when I started to do my healing work in my adulthood years was I was going to candy every single time my mom left the house every single time that I was around my dad because my dad was somebody who wasn't a healthy nervous system for me. I was very, I was very scared, I was lonely, I was depressed, I was all of these things. And candy was the thing that made me actually feel better. And I picked up that habit. So as I grew up, 
my teenage years, my adulthood years, when I learned that health and fitness is good for you, you should be eating this and that, and you know, you should be a healthy, balanced person. I'm like, okay, cool. Obviously it makes sense. Logically it makes sense. But then I would fall back into the candy and I would always wonder, why do I keep going back to this thing? I know it's not good for me, but I didn't realize that I still had that part of me that was operating in a place of fear. And even though I wasn't around my dad anymore, I still learned to cope with any stressful situation, any emotion that I never learned how to deal with through candy. And until I made that connection and looked at myself from a place of like, wow, like you're just trying to protect me. Like I'm going to eat all of these, this candy and I'm, I can't stop thinking about it because I am scared. I am scared, I don't know how to deal with these emotions and I'm no longer gonna get mad at you and shame you and tell you you are a failure because you keep going, falling off of a diet that is first of all too strict to begin with because diets are so goddamn strict. But on top of that, you know, you're obviously going through something. So let me see what you need. And really what I needed was to learn how to be with myself in the times where I felt very lonely. I needed to learn how to connect with others when I was feeling alone. I also needed to connect with my inner child and tell her like she is safe. I know the situation that you were living in and all of the situations that have occurred since then, they were scary, I get it. But you don't need that candy anymore because anytime that you are feeling alone or you're scared or you're nervous or you're overwhelmed, we can reach out to people now. We have friends, we have family, we have therapists, we have so many tools, we have guided meditations, I can journal, I can sit with you, I can soothe you instead of you feeling like you need to go to the candy. And you know what, that is what I needed when I was younger and I was feeling alone and I was feeling sad. But the truth is when we are younger, we usually don't have parents who are attuned to our nervous systems, who are attuned to our emotions. Some of them are just out of the house and they can't do anything about it. And on top of that, when we're very young, we can't even express that. I didn't know that I was experiencing loneliness and depression because I was around my dad. I mean, I knew that I was like, didn't really love being around him, but I didn't make that connection because you're young. You're literally young. Like, what are you supposed to do? So it's just good to see when you are doing certain behaviors to analyze why it is that you're doing that behavior. One good practice to do is called parts work. I've talked about it many times on my channel. I do have a parts work playlist. I will link it down below. And I did actually do a, an example of how to speak to the part of you that is wanting to continue to eat unhealthy or wants to overthink or wants to stress out. So you can have a dialogue with that part. You can also get the book No Bad Parts by Richard Schwartz have it down below. You can also, of course, go to a therapist. You can even ask them about parts work. You can ask them about inner child work. They're kind of like the same thing. Um, but I think that, that is such a great uh, technique and tool for you to use and you will find profound answers for yourself. You will be able to be there for yourself. I'm not gonna be able to tell you exactly what you need until you talk that part of you that really needs you to start listening to what the hell it needs instead of you telling it, no, we need to eat 1300 calories today and we need to go balls to the walls and we need to be super successful and blah, blah, blah. Those are all beautiful things that our ego wants that, um, our human desire, we have human desire to want to do that. And that is amazing. We don't want to throw that part of us out, but we need to address this part first. And what I was telling you guys at the beginning of this video, I did this a lot of healing work. That's what I'm talking about. And that is why I'm now at a, a healthy point in my life where my part is able to come on board with me to identify as somebody who just gets up, goes to the gym, takes care of herself because she is worth it. And she knows she can handle a challenge. She can handle a little bit of stressor because going and doing something for the first time or do going to the gym is a stressor, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be the end of the world. And even if some emotions come up, I'm able to be with that part of me if, if she needs me at any point. And listen, when you're talking about dealing with certain parts of you, your inner child that wants to come online when you're trying to do something for the first time, it is going to be important that you step in as the adult. And this is the energy that I'm in right now. And this is what this video is about, really. Stepping in with that masculine energy as an adult and being like, we are not going to sit here and spiral and think about it's going to be too hard to go to the gym and like I'm not worthy and I shouldn't do this or I don't know how to do this and it's going to be too much. Da -da. We have to throw out the stories. They're old stories. We can handle it. We are strong. We can get up. We can go to the gym. We can take care of ourselves. We are worthy. But it's going to take you being the adult self to coach yourself through the times. If you want something in your life, it's going to be up to you to get it. And how you get that thing first comes by you having that relationship with yourself. And trust me, 
once you have that type of relationship with yourself, the game changes. Everything that I've gotten in my life is because I've had a relationship with myself first. So I hope that made sense. I kind of went on a tangent, but I just want to reiterate this, this idea of being lazy and complacent and self-sabotage really, because it's just what I've been talking about. The reason why I'm saying I'm lazy, it's really, it's kind of a joke, but you know, sometimes you need that energy on yourself and being like, okay, hey, let's get up. Like we're, we're being a little too easy on ourselves now. We need to incorporate some masculine energy. We need to get up and we need to go. Just like your parent would tell you, a really good parent, let's get up, let's go to school. We need to do this thing. And on top of that, the thing that's really going to help you get up and go is just looking at yourself as somebody who takes care of themselves, goes to the gym, gets up and works. And on top of that, you're gonna be having that inner dialogue and saying, it's not a big deal that we get up and go and work. It's not a big crazy thing that we get up and go to the gym. Like everyone does it, not everyone, but you know, like the people that you really look up to, they do it. And if you like bring it back to that story about my friend, you want an ass like her? Well, how do you think she got it? She went to the gym, you know? and. One thing I want to say too, and I think you guys have all got this message, but the TikTok video that I posted about the same topic, but it was obviously a shorter version, somebody was saying, you know, just a reminder, you don't need to go to the gym to look great or like, you don't need to have a big butt or you don't need to X, Y, and Z. You don't need to have any of it. This is not a video of me telling you what you what your fitness routine is gonna look like, what you need to eat, what how you need to look, anything. But we all have certain desires in our lives so if you want something in your life, you can get it, but it's gonna require you to have this relationship with yourself. Identify as that person who gets up, stop getting in your own way. Seriously, stop getting in your own way and go and do the thing. And what's really gonna help you continue to do the thing because consistency is so important is to detach from the outcome. It's eventually going to come. And if you struggle with detaching from the outcome, I would suggest you address your beliefs because why is it that you don't believe if you were just consistent, you would get the result. Bring it back to my YouTube channel. I knew that I was going to eventually become a YouTuber if I continued to post, but I had that belief within myself and what I was saying, the actions that I was taking, but also I did see other people do it too. And that is another thing that's very, very helpful when you are trying to do something um, in your life, when you have goals or whatever, is to see that it's possible by looking at who else has achieved it. Looking at the people who are successful in your life or the people you look up to and their mindset. Literally, when I was talking to my friend, I was getting into her mind about how is it that you are always going to the gym? And we had this conversation. She literally just goes to the gym. She doesn't overthink it. She's not so tied on the results. Like, yeah, cool, we know we're going to the gym because our bodies are gonna look great and our mental health is gonna be great and, our, and our, we're just gonna be healthy overall, internally healthy. It's not just about the body image and how we look on the outside. But at the end of the day, she's just going. It's just a part of her journey. The same way when people ask me, like, how did you do it? Like, how did you grow so quickly and how did you whatever? I backed myself, I knew what I wanted, and I continued to go. So let me know if you guys want another video, anything to do with fitness and health. Um, I think that no matter what you're doing in your life, whether it's like building life your dreams in terms of your career, money, relationships, health and fitness, I really talk about it all because the mindset that I have and the things that I'm talking about, parts work and inner child work and healing, it can be applied to anything in your life and it does. And I use this type of thinking to get everything that I want in life. So I can definitely make more content like this. I was also thinking of making a video um, because I know a lot of you struggle with feeling confident at the gym and just confident within yourself to just get up and go out and do things and take the action. And again, it comes, it comes back down to the mindset, no matter what you're doing, whether you're eating, fitness, career, everything. So if you want that, let me know. Let me know what other videos that you want moving into the spring and the summertime. And don't forget, I do have two journal guides. I have a heal to manifest journal guide and I also have an inner child discovery prompt journal guide. It's digital or you can print it or you can just use your journal and then read it on the screen and write out your things if you want, which has been really helpful for a lot of you guys. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.